OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. And welcome to our Canvas Orientation Module presentation. And I'll start off by just introducing myself. So I'm Monica Cueva, and I'm from San Diego College of Continuing Education, as are all the presenters here today. And I am currently teaching an intermediate high vessel class in our ESL program. And I'm also our ESL technology coordinator. Hi, everyone. I'm Jessica Varnados Wall. I'm also teaching in our ESL and vessel department. I also serve as an online faculty mentor and as co-chair of our distance education committee. And hello, I'm Alicia Dunan. I am uh, from Dis Disabled Students Programming and Services. I am an adjunct um, instructor and um, I'm happy to be here with you all. Okay, for the agenda, this is what we're going to be going over. Informa information about DLAC will give you the um, what that stands for, the information about um, San Diego continuing education, the rationale for developing this online learning skills Canvas module, which we will share with you. We're going to also be giving you a Canvas module tour, and then we're going to show you how to access the Canvas module in the Canvas comments. So that's what we that's what we're going to do for this short amount of time. All right. So to get started, we'd like to talk about what is DLAC. Uh, DLAC is uh, part of OTAN, which is who is running this conference. So it's the Digital Leadership Academy. It is a two year program and because of the pandemic, it has been for our cohort, a completely distance um, situation, although previously and hopefully in the future, they will, there will be more face to face meetings. Um, it includes courses and in our case webinars and also a personal coach. Uh, in this program, we have developed leadership and technology skills specifically for um, distance education and blended education. Um, we're, we've been able to network with other agencies all over the state of California, which I think has been the most valuable part of the project. Um, and uh, the culminating project is to create and implement some sort of technology project of some kind that can benefit both your agency and hopefully other agencies within California as well. Thank you. So we also just kind of want to get a feel from you um, using your annotation. How do you feel about teaching online? So if you are on your computer, you should see a view options tab up at the top center of your screen and you can choose the stamp. So you can click annotate um, and then choose the stamp icon and select on this um, spectrum where you fall about your feelings towards online instruction. And I see, okay, we have more leaning towards I love it. <laughs> That's good news. Okay, some you're doing it, you're plugging along. Well, you're in a good, a good place at TDLS to learn more. A lot of hearts. <laughs> Okay, great. Well, I'm glad to see that no one here hates it. So that's looking good. So let's get another. We have one more question for you. Okay, so this one you can mark in the, the table below. So how do you prepare your students for online learning? you kind of, you know, you let them find their own materials so you don't do much, or do you present video tutorials? Do you offer one-to-one -one meetings, either in person or online? Do you have group lessons, or do you do something else? 
And I think that Theralia maybe does all three in the center. <laughs> I'm so sorry. it looks like my my parents thought that was intentional <laughs> that you are covering <laughs> those three center areas. Um, but it looks like we have a smattering of of techniques that we use to prepare our students for online learning. Um, maybe the people that selected other, if you feel like you'd want to share, if you could just type that in the chat. Um, other ways that you're preparing your students for online learning, that would be great. Okay, great. And Dominique, if you are on your, maybe if you're on a, a mobile device, then you should see, let me just go back here, um, a phone or tablet, you should see a little pencil icon. And if you tap that, then you'll be able to find the arrow tool. I even Googled it and the picture it shows it does not look like what I see on my screen. So I'm going to just accept feeling like my students feel until I can find somebody to show me where this imaginary annotation tool is. Okay, well, I'm sorry about that, Dominique. If you want, I can mark it for you just for now. Um, if you, how do you prepare your students for online learning? You know, it's normally presentation videos that I make and one-to-one -one meetings. Great, thank you. I will mark, whoops, I will mark those for you. And one-to-one -one meetings, okay. That's great. And I see in the chat that Diana uses a liquid syllabus, which is a wonderful way to orient students to the class. Um, and I will go ahead and clear this. Thank you everyone for sharing and we're gonna move on. All right, let me close this up. We are, just to give you a little bit of what we are, we are San Diego College of Continuing Ed Education. We are serving over 40,000 students annually, and we have seven campuses in San Diego. And we have a map of our seven different campuses, and then we do have some offsites also. Um, so we have Miramar, Mesa College, North City, Mesa City Campus, uh, Mid City, Cesar Chavez, and the edu Educational Complex also. That's just a map of San Diego that shows you. Okay. And these are some of this, this is the different components that we have with our College of Continuing Ed. We have automotive, business and accounting, child development, citizenship, clothing and textiles, community education, DSPS, that's where I'm from. Digital digital media, ESL, emirate. Oh, I'm going to say this one: emeritus, emeritus. There we go. Healthcare, high school diploma equivalency, hospitality, culinary arts, information technology, skilled and technical trades, and the ICOM Academy. Now, ICOM. Oh, you're going to have to help me on that one, Monica. I'm going to get half of it right. Um, it's interactive, competency-based online micro-credentialing. Okay. It's a mouthful. It is. <laughs> All right. Those are the things that Continuing Edge College of Continuing Education offers. All right. All right, so um, briefly, I'd like to go over our pandemic response and kind of how our institution responded in the spring of 2020 when everybody had to go remote. Um, our, we're part of a community college district, and as part of the district, we offer a 20-hour online faculty certification program. Your mileage may vary. Most people take a little longer to go through it, um, and it kind of covers um, the highlights of, you know, best practices as an online or distance educator in terms of um, how to use the LMS. We, we have been using Canvas 
um, as well as accessibility and equity issues in teaching online. We have we were lucky to have a CE online faculty mentor at the time that we went remote who was quickly bumped to full time and in fact recruited a team of online faculty mentors of which I'm a part and Monica has also been a part of and we're still we still have a team of online faculty members to this day that we match with faculty who are new or struggling with distance education um, in a one on one mentorship model. Um, we have daily, still at, even I think at this point, professional development opportunities, both through our district and outside vendors. Um, we have had various funding for student laptop and hotspot distribution. Our current one, I believe, is through the city of San Diego. Um, we have had teacher technology equipment checkout. And then on the student side of things, um, the ESL department specifically had launched online learning skills classes because a big part of the pandemic, uh, result of the pandemic was that a lot of our very beginning level students just completely dropped off. We're not able to make that trans transition to online learning. Really, we're struggling with both Zoom and Canvas. So we started offering online learning skills classes to these students but also others. So we have beginning, intermediate, and advanced ESL levels. And other departments within our institution have found kind of their own um, uh, training classes or tutoring programs as well. Uh, we were able to eventually move our EL Civics and CASAS assessment online. That has been an ongoing process, as you might imagine. A lot of, a lot of effort and um, training and testing has gone on, especially with the CASAS assessment online. And then starting in the fall semester this academic year, we have started offering high flex courses, which are a combination of um, online and face-to-face -face with the student having the ultimate flexibility of deciding even on a day-to-day -day basis, which modality they would prefer to have in their class. So the instructor will be on campus with the in-person students while simultaneously leading Zoom sessions for students who are accessing it from a distance. There was just one more that snuck in there. Just oh, so the sorry. <laughs> and then of course, now that we are able to go back on campus a bit more, we both have online and high flex student orientations, as well as those online learning skills classes. So we have had a pretty good response to, to high flex in our beginning level ESL classes. Um, and even this semester, we've started to offer some completely face to face classes as well, which is helping us to build back and start reaching those very beginning level low liter low digital and English literacy students. And I'm just going to give you some background information about our ESL program, and then Alicia will share about our DSPS program, um, because on our DLAC team, these are the two programs that we're from that we're trying to bring together and work, create something that is valuable for not only these two programs, but all of our continuing education programs as well. Um, so in ESL for our spring semester, we currently have 3,600 students. And some of these students might be taking multiple classes, so more than one class, but these are the, this is the individual count of students that we currently have, um, which is significantly fewer students than we had prior to the pandemic. Um, we offer seven levels of general ESL and five different levels of our VESEL classes, pre-vocational ESL. And we have transition to college, course offerings, citizenship. And we also offer special topics classes. For every, for all of these classes that you see here, we do offer course and program certificates for students who successfully complete a course or program. And then we also have special topics classes that are usually shorter term classes. And this includes our online learning skills class that Jessica had previously mentioned. We also have a career pathways class that allows students to choose a pathway that they're interested in and study modules online for that specific pathway that help them prepare and lead into our certificate programs that we have. 
in continuing education. Uh, we have conversation uh, classes, pronunciation, grammar, and reading classes. And we're currently offering our ESL classes mostly online, but we are, have also opened up to offer face-to-face -face classes and um, HyFlex classes as well. And English for Parenting, our newest offering. And English for Parenting, yes, thank you. Yeah, okay. sorry. <laughs> and our Disabled Students Programming Services, currently this semester we we have 854 students. Uh, this involves our learning disability, physical disability, psychological disability, deaf, hard of hearing, uh, visual, acquired brain in impairment, intellectual disability, other disabling condition conditions also such as ADD, diabetes, epilepsy. So those are some of the, those are the services that we provide. All right. All right. Okay, and then we'll, we'll each now we're going to take you on the Canvas module tour. And so we'll each share a screen and share a part of this module with you. And then after we kind of give you this tour of the module, we'll show you how you can access this in Canvas Commons so that you can put this module into your uh, Canvas course and decide how you would like to use it with either your your colleagues, your teachers, or with your students to help everyone prepare to learn uh, either, you know, how to study online or how to teach online even. So I will go ahead and stop sharing. So in our welcome materials, we have two levels of our pre-semester survey. Um, both at the beginning level and the intermediate and advanced level, depending um, upon what you think is best for your students. So let me open up the first one here. This is copyable, so it will just give you the opportunity to make a copy here. And I do want to let everybody know that everything that we've included in this module is fully available for you to use, change, add to, subtract from, and make it work for you and your students in any way, including these welcome surveys. So in the beginning, uh, welcome survey template, you know, it says welcome to ESL class, but you could use this with any population of learners, high school equivalency or any others. We've tried to um, include helpful photos for each of our questions here. Um, and again, these are all, um, Usually, most of them are from Unsplash, and they're all non-copyrighted images that are free to be used, uh, but feel free to swap out or change any of them as you might like. Um, it goes through a lot of different um, questions that you might have for your students, including what kind of technology your students have access to, um, what sort of things they already can do with their technology. Um, if it's their first time in an online class, and again, if it's not an online class, you could use this with high flex or hybrid students as well, or even face to face, if you are web enhanced. Um, if they have a job, and if so, what time, or, or what job do they have? And then in terms of timing, in our ESL department, our fully online classes are considered to be mostly asynchronous, but we do have synchronous Zoom sessions that are not exactly required, but highly recommended for our students to attend. And we do try to offer flexibility to our students as to when those Zoom sessions will occur. So um, some, some teachers will reach out and include that about what is the best Zoom time for students to meet if they're available to meet synchronously. Um, so that is the beginning level survey. And we also have an intermediate and advanced survey with more questions and a little bit less picture help on it. Make a copy. Um, which is divided a little bit more into sections here. So how did you hear about the class? Are you taking other classes? Goals and work experience questions? Technology questions, which are similar, but a little bit less picture heavy than the beginning level. How comfortable are you? 
um, and a little bit more open-ended questions as well. Um, the other two materials that I would really uh, encourage you to investigate if you download this module are the tips for success in an online class, as well as our online learning problems and advice. So tips for success in an online class is at a slightly lower language level and uh, kind of chunks some important advice for online students. It has the, the written advice as well as an audio here, and then a few multiple choice questions for comprehension after each chunk. And again, you know, our Zoom versus Canvas times are gonna be different from yours. So feel free to add, change, anything you like, but if you do change any of the text, we would recommend for you to re-record the um, audio portion because that is tied to the written portion there. Um, and then if your students are at a little bit higher linguistic level, then we really um, recommend this online learning problems and advice because it has some situations that are are very pertinent and, and real for our students. And it also included our own students and instructional assistants voices in here as well, which I think is, is fantastic. And it, it's very relatable, all of the situations about, you know, I have a crying baby, what should I do? Or I, I can't meet the Zoom times or various other situations. But I know we're a little pressed for time. So I'm gonna stop there. And so we can get started with our Zoom resources. Okay. Oh, did you want me to do the video? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Is that, that's what's next, right? Um, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Got it. All right. I'm just going to kind of, you all can see this? Yes? Okay. Thank you. It's like, all right. Uh, great. Uh, I'm going to do the now I'm going under the Zoom materials, and what we have is a video quiz, a quiz and a video. So we have them in different formats. I'm just going to show you the video quiz. I'll do like maybe one minute because we are running short on time, just to show you what we have so you can see it. Uh, let's resume this. Study online. Get ready for your online class. When do I use mute and unmute? So it's very, very nice and slow. In this video, you will learn how to mute and unmute, to check your noise level, and when to mute and unmute. Okay. I'll stop at the first question. In this video, you will learn about mute and unmute. So I'm just gonna hit true and continue. And on that, I'm gonna- How do I- I'm gonna stop at that one because I know we're short on time, but we do have a lot of, in that particular quiz, we also have um, multiple uh, matching. There's different ways to answer it. So I made sure there was a different variety for anyone to multiple learners, any type of- learning I changed it up a little bit so just to kind of um, let me go back I guess I should share that but it has different in that in the quiz it has different varieties so for lower level and then it goes up to a little bit higher so all right I I went so fast but I know we're running short on time and I know you all want to know how to get to this Oh, Alicia, modules. we still, we have plenty of time. You can share your canvas and- Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I was like- Walk oh. them through a little more of Zoom. Yeah. Okay. All right. I was like, I'm worried. <laughs> All right. Go back through this. All right. I'll go or to the show next. a little bit more of what's available for the Zoom and material. Me. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Let me close that. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, oh man. Now I got to get back to that. There we go. All right. So video, the one, two, and three, very basic. And then I'm going to show you one of these. I'll go to this video quiz. This is another great one that we have that you give you a little flavor of. I guess I should go to student view. Let's see. How do we 
resume quiz. Uh, here we go. Similar to this one, but I, I like this. It has a lot of icons in there, a lot of great things, how to join on an iPad and iPhone. And another thing, if you are, well, you all aren't, but if you know an instructor who's a little bit scared to teach online, this is a really great information for you. I've met so many teachers who are afraid. Here's a great way to learn how to do it on a phone. So, and also on a tablet. Again, pictures are excellent. And then here is question one. How do you talk to your teacher and class, classmates online? Just a kind of variety. Now, be, my students aren't a, are not good readers, minimal reading. So I would just go ahead and read this and ask them, but you could have someone you know, who can read. So I think these are offers this offers a wide um, variety for, for all the learners. So let me leave the student view, sorry. Now I'm getting, now it's getting worse. Yikes, there we go. So let me see what else. Okay, we go back to our modules. Oh, I got, I'm getting a little bit. Okay, here we go. All right, so in that, uh, so we go again, the video quiz one, two, and three, very simple, has a, you, questions. And then the other ones, quiz and the video, these ha have all more information added to it. So I would encourage you to take a peek. You can copy the links again, and um, I think it'll be great for you guys. All right, that's, is that good? Good enough? Okay, I was worried. <laughs> Thank you, Alicia. Sure. Um, okay, so I'm going to share with you the Canvas materials. So Jessica um, went over the welcome materials. So this is all, as you can see, this is all one module. So when, we, when you get this from Commons, you're importing an entire module into your course and or your development shell preferably. And we don't expect you to keep the module as is. We don't expect you to use everything that's in this module. It's more like an archive of resources that you can pick and choose from. So we've included you know, everything that we have, all the videos we have, we've created these quizzes, but really it's once you have it in your Canvas course, you own it and you can publish two items from this, two elements, or you can publish 20. Um, and you can integrate them throughout your course in se separate modules, or if you want one orientation module, you also have that option. And you have the option to share these in Zoom with your students and go over it together, or you could give them, offer them as assignments for them to do independently in Canvas, or maybe if you have a computer lab class, they could work on it in the computer lab. So you have many different options of in any modality of learning how you want to use this module. So it's completely yours and you have the flexibility to do with it what you would like. Um, and so, and then Alicia just went over the Zoom materials that we have available to orient students to Zoom. And then we also have some materials specific to Canvas to help students learn how to use Canvas. So there's a very introductory video um, that just shows students how to even log into Canvas and where Canvas is. So this one is called, Where is My English Class? Uh, so we've created a quiz using this video, and I can just, I'll, I'll just, um, we can watch this, just the first few seconds of this video so you get an idea. Study online. Where is my English class? Where is my English class? First, go to the internet. Use Chrome or Safari. Second, type 
sdccd.instructure.com. And so this one you would have to modify a little bit because um, your link would be different for Canvas, but you could even embed your own video for your school at, to access Canvas. And then you could still keep these questions here. And I like this one because it does include the image. So students will see how, you know, what is the 10 digit user ID? Um, what is your Canvas password? Um, and then the Canvas password is their birth date. So it's showing, you know, and a lot of students will mix up the month and the day and put those in a different order. So then they can't log into Canvas. So it's just asking them um, to confirm that they know what uh, the password would be. And um, we also have um, a practice activity to show students how to respond to a discussion board. And there's also a video tutorial that shows them how to post to a discussion board. There's a quiz here to show them how to use Canvas messaging. And so this one again has video tutorials for them to learn how to send an email to their teacher, both on a computer, laptop, and on a mobile device as well. So we made a lot of these videos. They were created by teachers within our program, kind of at the height of the pandemic. And so we had all these videos, and then we ended up using these videos and creating materials with them in Canvas. So now we have the videos and we've built quizzes around them. We've built studio quizzes and assignments. So we're creating things that you can actually use with your students to help them watch the videos and check their comprehension. Um, and I like this one also because it includes the images. So where do they go to send a message to their teacher? And even a little bit of etiquette as well. What's a good subject heading, a good salutation, and so on for that. Okay, if you're using Pronto with your class, there is a video here that shows how to use Pronto. Um, also, uh, just a screenshot tutorial of how to add a profile image with instructions. So the step-by-step -step instructions and then the steps that students would follow to update their profile. And also a video that shows, walks students through checking their grades in Canvas. So you're spending time providing feedback and adding grades to their assignments, but a lot of times students don't know that you're doing this if we don't show them how to check and see your feedback and comments. So uh, that video is in there as well for students. We also at the bottom of the module, then we have other resources that you could use. Uh, so we have a student website which is actually really great because it includes all of the videos in one place. So you might even decide if you're not using Canvas with your students, you might decide that you just want to share this website with them. That was also created by our VESSEL program. And there are links to Canvas videos, Zoom videos, um, videos about giving online presentations, digital skills, and textbooks. So this is um, a great resource if you're not using Canvas, or you could even send this link to students before the class even begins, before they might have access to Canvas. And that's located in other resources, and that was the student website. Uh, we have a link to our video playlist. So this has over 40 videos that walk students through different skills that they need to study online. So again, you could just click on the playlist and access any of those videos that you would like. Um, and then we have links to other websites with resources for appropriate ESL levels. Uh, so you can, you know, this is all open to you. You can take a look. 
and see what you like and what you would want to use. And down below, I, we have an unpublished item um, because this is for the teacher only. And it has some of our videos were created in studio. Uh, so if you want to use any of those, we've also provided links and embed codes to any of those videos so that you can easily add them into your Canvas shell or other website or LMS that you're using with your students. So those are also available for you here. Okay, now to the good stuff. I'm going to show you how you can actually access this. Um, and we have instructions on this presentation, which we will be sharing with you. So if you forget, they will be here. And it, um, the steps are, you know, first you'll log into Canvas. And then you'll want to click on Canvas Commons. This is the icon for Commons. You'll click on that and I'll walk you through this in Canvas as well. I'm just going over the written steps first. Uh, you'll type in digital literacy as DCCE. Sorry for um, a little update, Monica. I was able to get the link to work. I found okay. another place to get it. So the link is, is in okay, there. Okay, I was surprised. I was like, oh, I yeah. didn't know I it was a last this. minute thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so we have previously had some issues when sharing the link but you can try to just click that link and you'll be taken directly to the module. If that doesn't work, then you can follow these steps and just type in the search digital literacy at DCCE. Um, then you'll see this module will pop up. So I'll go ahead and walk you through how to do that in Canvas right now. So on the left, you'll see this is the commons icon with the C. And you wouldn't have to do this if you just click that link, then you'll go, it'll bring you directly to the module, but I'll show you these steps just in case that doesn't work for you. And then you can type digital literacy as DCCE. I don't believe it's case sensitive. And it's the only module that will appear. So then it's easy for you to, you'll click on this to open it. And you can preview it first. You, you won't be able to select you know, what you'd actually like to import. This just allows you to preview everything that's in this module, just so you can be sure that it's something you would like to import. So you can look at that. And then when you're ready, on the right, you will select Import Download. And you'll choose the course that you would like to import this into. We would recommend, um, as with anything that you're importing from Commons, create, you know, have a development shell created and use that if you're importing any content from Commons, just so then you can store it in the development shell, you can view it in the development shell and decide what you'd actually like to use in your class. And then you can move it over to your course that you're currently teaching. But it's just a way to prevent anything from happening, any changes from occurring to your course shell by putting it in a development shell first. Um, so you'll select the course that you'd like it to go into and then, then you'll just select import into course. And it will appear at the bottom of all your other modules that you have in your development shell or course shell. Okay. And did I miss anything, Alicia and Jessica? I just posted um, the, a link to the slides. Um, and then you. we have some questions on how to create a development shell. Yeah, so, so I think this might vary based on your school, but for us, we uh, there's a little help icon on the left of our global navigation, and there is a support um, phone number and chat for faculty. So we have this faculty support line as well as chat, and you would just call, tell them what school you're a part of, and that you would like a development shell. That's our process. I can't say that that's the same everywhere. Oh, and yes, the sandbox is the same thing as development shell. Right. 
Okay, great, Tom. I'm glad that you were able to import it already wow. into a Canvas shop. <laughs> nice. And yeah, and Laura provided a direct link to the module, so thank you. I'm glad the direct link is working. We've been having a lot yeah, of issues. Yeah, so I know we've fantastic. had so many problems with that, so that's great. Um, and then we do have some reflective questions for you. We This is a shorter presentation, so we didn't have time to go into breakout groups, but um, just some things for you to think about, um, you know, as how you prepare your students for online learning um, and making sure that, you know, we're covering everything that they would need um, to be able to be successful in your course. So that first and foremost means you know, do they have access to email? Do they actually have a device with internet access? Uh, can they access your LMS? Do they know how to get in? Um, some of those are, you know, the, what we need to do and prepare students for prior to even starting the class. Um, you can think about how you would use any part of this module in your course or um, as others have brought up before in professional development. So others, you know, they might be in a department where students are not using Canvas, but maybe teachers need to start using it um, before. And this is, you know, these are all tools that you can also share with your faculty so that they can get, you know, more familiar with Zoom or Canvas or other online tools. Um, and, you know, we'd love to hear if you have any resource recommendations that could be added in this module because we are making this available to everyone, it would need to be in the public domain and be able to be shared with anyone, but we would love to have any, you know, any additions to the module. And uh, I guess we'd open it up right now to any questions or if anyone has any other online learning tips that they would like to share, or well, Jessica and Alicia, if you'd like to add anything. I do have something, um, one of the, uh, I think someone had asked to put that if you could do the the slideshow in a bigger screen. Someone had asked that. Oh yes. And then the other thing um, I was going to say, even although my students are not they are are not capable of going into Canvas, I use a lot of these things like the quizzes and even some. There's a scavenger hunt. There's a lot of great resources in here that I use for my students. So. I, they do not use Canvas, but I use a lot of the resources in here. So this is a really great little library that you have all these great little tools of the trade to use. So um, that, that's just another thing to say that if, you know, you all probably have students who use it in ESL or whatever you're using, but my students don't use Canvas, but I still have the links and I can uh, use that. So it's a great way another resource of learning for the students. So I'm just doing an extra plug. <laughs> no, and Alicia, I like that you called it a library because that's exactly yeah. what we want it to be, um, you know, where you can go in and, and find the tool or resource that you want to share with your students. Yeah. And I don't think it's limited to Canvas. You do need to at least have your own account on Canvas as a teacher, but after you download module into Canvas, if you're not using that as your LMS with the students, you can still download the videos and put them into whatever LMS you are using. So, you know, Canvas is what we're using. So that's where we're housing it, but don't feel constrained by that. Definitely. Thank you. Okay. So I think, is that, is that it? That was the bulk <laughs> of it. Nuala, oh, Nuala had Oh, Laura, comment. you had a question above. Um, above, uh, about, oh, CASAS materials. Yeah, do we, mm. is every institution doing that a little bit differently or how does that work? I've been out a little out of the loop on the CASAS stuff. Yeah, I have as well. I'm not sure if that would be something that if, you know, we create it, if it's the same across the board, but that's a, a good idea, Laura. Thank you. 
Um, but it's something we have not yet considered. Uh, but, but now we might, yeah. Thank you. And, and were there, oh. Nuala had something about the materials don't seem to work after being imported into my sandbox. So would you like to elaborate a little bit on that? But what, what is the issue, Nuala? Oh, um, first, thank you so much because um, I'm seeing you've done exactly what I've already spent hours and hours doing myself. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, and it's great to see how you, your take on it. Now, just a few of the things in the in the module as I'm clicking through are not functioning. A lot of it is, and it's great, but some of it's not. I Were those why. by chance the, the video quizzes? Uh, I haven't even tried to open those yet. Uh, uh, actually, maybe video how to use Pronto. Is that a quiz? Is mm. that a studio quiz? That, so that yeah. one is studio. So if you do run into any of those, um, so sorry, let me just go That's back. Couldn't to... find valid link is what it says. So we that have... was added with studio. So that one might um, not, you might not be able to share that one, but if you scroll down to the bottom, and let me just go back here. Of the module or of that? Scroll um, down to the bottom of the module, and you should see then the, and under teacher, teacher only. Mm. So at the bottom of the module, teacher only, that's where if you find a video that you can't access, such as the Pronto one, then here you will be able to see a link and an embed code that you could then put into your Canvas course or other LMS or website okay. that you're using. Yeah. I think the uh, issue might arise because our institution has a subscription to Canvas Studio, but maybe not every institution does. We do have that. Oh, I, you do. Okay. I, I'm using Studio, yeah. um, but I don't use the quizzes because, and I don't use, I use Studio to create, but I don't use it to embed because it doesn't work well on iPhone Canvas app. So it's a frustration for my students. But thank, thank you for that feedback. Yeah, we can look into that a little bit further. Yeah, I think just with the direct link from my experience, those will open on uh, the Canvas app. So if you either embed it separately, not at adding the app, so using these links and embed codes here, then um, that should be fine. Well, if we are using Canvas with private account, uh, do you think uh, we can still, um, you know, you uh, find you um, can Canvas Commons and import, mm -hmm. download. Oh, thank you. Yes, definitely. And if if your students aren't using Canvas, but you have an account, that's fine too. Then you can just take any of this content and you can add it to whatever you are using with your students as well. And Dominique, I see your hand thank up. You. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So if I'm looking in, um, comments. I, I know that sometimes when I'll go in there, if I put in, you know, I'm looking for one specific thing, I get a plethora. Is there a certain term or like, how do I make sure that I'm getting to your Canvas local? So if, if I'm you download or import. Yeah, um, thank you. So if you click on the link, that should take you directly there. But if you don't have at the link on hand, then you just type digital literacy SDCCE, and that will take you directly to our module. Okay, thanks, because I can go to it, but if I want to import it, I need to be within my Canvas account, so that will work oh, yeah. for me. Thank you. You're welcome. Are you going to publish the uh, link, the only video link? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Uh -huh. I didn't hear you very clearly. Publish uh, the teacher only video links. I'm not sure, Jessica or Alicia, were you able to hear that? It's a little muffled on my end. Are you talking about the teacher video links? That should be the last uh -huh. thing in the module. 
Uh -huh. So you will need to, um, I don't think you can in individually download parts of a module, but after you download the full module, it's uh -huh. at the very bottom. It's, um, so it's not published. Are you going to publish it? Um, it is It is published as part of the module. It's just oh. that it, it's not like that particular Lighted. one. Yeah. Is, yeah, it's it's there. It's there. Because okay, you will you. still have access to it. Mm -hmm. I just, in case a teacher puts this in their course and oh, leaves okay. it for students, this mm -hmm. I didn't want I to be it. automatically published. Got it. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for attending today. And we do have our contact information on the last slide of the presentation and we are open to hearing from you and receiving any feedback or questions that you may have so thank you for taking time out of your afternoon to be here today and we hope that you find these resources helpful for your agency and program